Okay, here we go, here we go. The cherry was playing a roller coaster simulator here and it got pretty intense. But let's rewind a bit first. Hey everyone, Kaz here and uh, welcome to another Dive Into VR episode where we discover a new VR technology. This right here is the Yaw VR Motion Simulator. It's a moving chair that allows you to feel the motion of a virtual reality simulation. Imagine feeling what it's like to dogfight in an aircraft or to race in your dream car without leaving the comfort of your home. This device will move exactly in sync with your airplane, that car or whatever else you are sitting in and it will make that whole VR experience feel more realistic. But that's not even the thing that makes this particular simulator more unique because it's also compact and that's pretty portable, especially compared to other motion simulators out there in the market right now. And the price isn't that bad either, so this could be a good motion simulator for home use, but stick around until the end of this video to find this out together. And if you'd like to see more videos like this one, then uh, please consider subscribing. And now join me beyond reality. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously it didn't come like this. I had to assemble some parts myself. So let's get into that first. So this is what comes in the box. This is the shell. It's what you sit on. It has a belt for those dangerous drivers. Pillow for your back. And this is the bottom part, the simulator itself. There are motors and other hardware inside. I don't know what these are called, but the shell goes on top of the simulator. So I guess this is what causes the vibrations and the G-force simulations. You also get a footrest and plate holders for joysticks or steering wheels. You get a power cable and screws for the setup. Then we also have the head and backrest, which is only available in the YAL VR Pro Edition. You can also get the standard edition, which has most except for the head and backrest. So let's uh, set it up now. It all should take about 30 minutes, uh, but some people say it takes a bit longer. So I'm curious to see if the setup is really that easy. So the first thing I am mounting is the footrest plate on the foot holder arm. You will get the screws included for this. After that, I put the shell on the simulator. The triangle piece on the shell is the front and that's where the foot holder should be mounted on. There's also little holes in the shell that you can stick the foot holder in. It's all pretty straightforward if you follow the video guides in the yaw manual. Now the central holder can be mounted on top of the footrest. You have to mount the central holder first. Then the plate goes on top. To mount the plate, you need a screwdriver that can attach the hex key insert. Y'all provided the insert but not the screwdriver here. So on this plate you can mount something like a steering wheel, but I, I don't have one yet so I'm just going to put this on to show you. This central holder is nice because you can adjust its angle to your liking using this clip. You can also adjust its height if you loosen this screw a little. Now we're almost done. The last thing to mount is the head and backrest. Here I'm mounting the head part on the backrest first. Now I'm putting it on the shell with some screws, which I needed my own hex key for by the way. Alright, I think we're done. I'm super excited to uh, try this one out. Oh, but there is one little plate that I didn't attach yet. Uh, the extra plate. This is a uh, joystick holder that you can uh, place uh, instead of these handles here. You can remove these handles and then place it here or at the left side. Uh, but I don't have a joystick yet, so I'm going to skip this part for now. So I think all of the hardware setup took me about an hour. I think the part that took the longest was because of my footrest holder that seemed to have been damaged during transport. So I had to wait until Yaw VR sent me a new piece. But after that, it uh, all worked. Hey, <laughs> yes. Whoa, <laughs> whoops. So yes, I put the camera back there because I'm going to be jumping on this thing for the first time to test if it works. I am pretty excited. So uh, let's just turn it on. As you can see, I already put the power cable in and there's a button back here that I need to push to turn it on. I already have the app installed and oh, that's beautiful. There's a little uh, LED light strip at the bottom here. There is also a key that I got in the box that I need to use back here to turn on the motors as well. And then there's one more thing I need to turn on, which is this positional tracker, which is this footrest thing. And uh, there's a little light here 
and right now it turned uh, green so that means that uh, it's tracking now before we move on to some gameplay let's take a look at some of its technical specifications real quick so the Yaw VR simulator is pretty unique because of its form factor it's more compact than most motion simulators out there its diameter is only 31 inches, its height is 17 inches, and its weight is about 57 pounds, for the standard edition at least. The head and back rest adds a little bit more weight. The max load that this thing can carry is 265 pounds, and the max recommended height is 6.4 feet. It's also a 3 DAF simulator, which means it can pitch, yaw, and roll. The yaw simulator can also turn 360 degrees unlimitedly, which even many industrial simulators can't do. The max speed it can spin around is 360 degrees per second. This is my first motion simulator impressions by the way, so I don't have much to compare it with except for some of the stuff I've tried at events, and so I'm still learning about this subject, but I hope I can help out with this video. Let me know in the comments below if there's anything you would like to know and I will include it in the next video, after you watch this video of course. So it's time for the cool part. Cherry and I will both test this thing with some VR games and share our first impressions, but before we can do that it needs to be paired and calibrate it with the software, which isn't very hard, but uh, let me quickly run you through it. Once the YAW simulator is turned on, you'll be able to detect it using a phone app with Bluetooth. Using that app, you can uh, send in your Wi-Fi credentials. You can also use a network cable, there's a slot for that at the back by the way. Then the first thing we have to do is calibration, which is done by putting the YAW simulator in its starting position and then pressing the C button on the app. Uh, I think it looks good for the calibration, so ah. let's sit. Ooh, hey, that's pretty comfortable. This is a little bit high. I think I'd put it on the lowest too. Okay, how about we try test mode? Let's see what that is. Test right. <gasps> it's doing something. Ooh, ooh. I'm not sure if I should hold my iPad here. Oh, I'm feeling lots of vibrations. Kind of sounds like uh, uh, one of our neighbors is working on the house with like a drill or something. Whoa, this is so funny. <laughs> so this is a test mode and I can actually see it uh, do the pitch and the roll. I can see that it's testing something. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's, a, if it's supposed to hit the floor like that. I think I need to recalibrate it. I think I want to try a uh, VR experience now. So let's stop this. There's currently two ways of playing VR games with this motion simulator for us consumers. If you are a game developer, then you could develop something for your own game using their SDK. But that's not what we are going to do today. So the first option is using YAL's own software that syncs up with the motion simulator with games like Assetto Corsa, Dirt Rally 2, DTS, No Limits 2, etc. And the second option is using SimTools, which is a popular generic motion simulator software which has a big community building for it. First up is YAL software, which is free to use. I already had Assetto Corsa in my library, so I wanted to try that out. For those that don't know, Assetto Corsa is a racing simulator game with campaigns and all that, and it supports VR. YAL software is the easiest to get running, but there are steps to do per game. For example, to get it running on Assetto Corsa, I have to paste a plugin into the game's plugin folder. Afterward, you have to run the YAL software in the background with the simulator connected. Then you have to start your race first and start the plugin and device from there. Let's uh, test this out. All right, let's do this. Whoa, holy crap. Okay, so I just <laughs> pressed the gas pedal. I'm using the gas pedal, if I go really fast, you can really feel that. That is so fun. Oh my gosh, it feels really realistic. Is this kilometers or miles? I think it's kilometers, that's nice because that is what we use here in Holland. You can feel the different material of the floor, uh, the sand. The road is definitely more comfortable. If I accelerate now, I'm going to accelerate now really fast. Oh! <laughs> Holy moly! Okay, and now braking. Oh my god! Okay, you should never do that. Not ever in real life, not even in this game. Oh. 
<laughs> let me mute myself for a bit. But as you can see, it works well. When I go full throttle, I could feel the G-force. Also, when braking, I could feel that force directly kicking my butt. It all feels real. Normally, racing simulators aren't my cup of tea. However, being able to feel makes it more fun. And now I kinda wanna play more. Unfortunately, when I play racing simulators in VR, I also get motion sick. I do seem to feel less vertical with the yaw simulator though, but after like 30 minutes I could still feel it kick in. Do keep in mind that this is very personal and that you can get better at this with practice. Next we are going to get a Cherry's first impression. So let's launch No Limits 2, which is a roller coaster simulator. Oh, oh it does seem to work. Oh I like this. This one this one is beautiful with all these trees close. Yes. Um, is this supposed to be happening? Yeah. What the hell? Uh, oh my god! Massage! Here we go. Oh, beautiful. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Ah! 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 Oh! oh my gosh, this one is so good. Isn't she cute? So let me mute her for a second too to talk about the Sim Tools software. To get No Limits 2 working with the YAW simulator, I had to use Sim Tools. With this software, you can connect more games as it has a big user base with people building plugins for it. Keep in mind that this software costs 50 bucks, and if you want to download plugins, you will need a different license as well. Meh. This software seems to be very powerful though, and works pretty great once you have it set up. The initial setup can be complicated though, but that's mostly because your VR doesn't provide a very clear guide for this. I think if they revised their manual to be more consumer friendly, it would be tons better. So I'm not going to go through the setup of sim tools in this video or else it will be too long. But at least you only have to do it once per game and then it should be like plug and play afterwards. Use, use the right trigger, the right Woo! Yeah. <laughs> Accelerate. Oh my gosh! Ah! Uh. Left trigger is crazy. I don't know. Uh, it's 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 it's. Where should it go? To the right? Ah! Oh my gosh! Yes! Yo! Oh. oh my god! Get off! Get off! Destruction! <laughs> I think Cherry is enjoying this a little too much, not that that's a bad thing. But whilst he does that, let's move on to the conclusion of this video. So these are my first impressions because I haven't even shown everything that it's capable of. I've been running the simulator on 40% of power, but you can boost the power and even the angles in the app. So I'm going to play around with the yaw motion simulator for a little longer and I'll do a full review later. But I'm already positively surprised at how the smaller form factor is still able to give simulations that can make the whole experience much more realistic. Especially when using it with a VR headset, it's a ton of fun. However, this isn't a VR accessory that everyone needs. It is more suited for those really into realistic simulators like racing or flight. You won't be able to play other games with it unless you have the technical skill to build for it. If you are the simulated type, then you should also be ready to put a lot of time in the software setup per game. Plus, you will also need some form of cable management for your VR headset too. In this video I used the Vive Cosmos with the wireless adapter, but there are other options too, like pulleys or a stand to hang the cable. Or you could use virtual desktop with the Oculus Quest as well. 
So the yacht simulator costs 1,490 US dollars for the standard edition. The pro edition is 1,990 dollars. This might sound like a lot, but most motion simulators usually cost a lot more. Now, if you want to get more info, I've put a link in the description. So, what do you think of this motion simulator? Do we actually have any uh, simulator enthusiasts in our midst? Let me know in the comments below whether you would get this yacht chair. And thanks for watching this video. Leave me a like for support, and I hope to see you in the next. And a special thanks goes to my right hand patron, Vexon VR. Support him supporting us by checking out his YouTube channel. And as always, VR on.